Hello, and welcome to the LifeWorks podcast. Joining me today is longtime friend and colleague, Walter Powell, security expert and former 20-year police officer with the City of Alexandria, Virginia Police Department. Walter, thank you for being on the podcast today. It's great to have you. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Walter, the reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast today is because you are a man who grew up in the first generation following the civil rights era. And you spent 20 years of your career as a police officer. And in this day and age where I feel like the world is desperate for common sense and critical thinking, I feel like you are uniquely qualified to offer an intelligent perspective on race, on the police, and, and honestly, and what people can do as individuals to become more awake, more aware, and enlightened about a variety of issues. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about your backstory, you know, where you grew up, your upbringing, your parents, um, and just, just about you. Okay. Okay. So I am uh, from Alexandria, where I uh, worked for 25 years. I spent the first 15 years of my life there. Um, I was actually born in Washington, D.C., which is really unique. I love saying that. I was actually born in D.C. Yeah. Um, at, at around the age of 15, I actually moved out of Alexandria. My, uh, I, I come from a... Um, a split home. My father lived in Manassas, my mom in Alexandria. Mm. And uh, I decided at, at 15 years old that uh, moving away from the city, things that I was experiencing and seeing, I wanted to get out and get another uh, view. Mm. Uh, so I so I left Alexandria, um, went to Manassas, where I live with my father. Um, finished, finished my schooling there. Um, Major difference in schooling, God, it's just the Alexandria school system versus, you know, the, the, the Prince William County Manassas schooling system. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was struggling in Alexandria and I, and I, and I blossomed in Manassas. I, I don't understand. I'm the same person. But anyway, um, yeah. I, I, I looked at uh, options of where to go uh, to college and honestly decided that it wasn't for me, for my family. Um, yeah. I, I remember looking at the cost and seeing the looked in my you know my father's eyes of how do we afford to do to do this yeah and then i then i just i start um managing really at a very young age i i uh i got a job through high school just simply working as a shoe salesman mm -hmm. um and then as a shoe salesman i end up managing the store at at 17 years old and, and uh some of my um employees were firefighters on their days off working you know, uh, shoe mm. self people. And wow. that's where I met the person that recruited me into law enforcement mm. was, was through shoes. So I, um, you know, I ended up going through the process and, and there I became um, my first position in law enforcement with the deputy sheriff. Wow. Uh, back to Alexandria, I went. Right? <laughs> wow. So, so 15 years growing up, move out to Manassas and then, it, then, then life brings me back to my home yeah and, uh, and i you know right away i just um once i you know became of age 21 i, I took the test and, and became a police officer mm. uh, and I, I didn't tell you is that it's always been my desire to serve the public and it's always been my desire so when when um my friend jim walked into my store and said hey you should be a police officer and just that was confirmation for me i was like you know what mm. let's do it so i ended up going right back and and, and policing in my own community so yeah uh, and then after that uh you know i, I retired uh, 2006 from police work after 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 sustaining a um, pretty serious injury mm. um and then i i uh, got into other things you know i was trying to find myself and wasn't sure what i wanted to do and i was you know managing that that was my only other skill right you can either you can <laughs> either do policing or, or you can manage stuff Right, so I, started, right. I started managing um, uh, facilities, facilities mm -hmm. for the city of Alexandria, yeah, uh, uh, indoor and outdoor properties, and uh, yeah. and honestly, managing facilities and just seeing the, the facility world and seeing things um, that weren't quite right and I couldn't change it, 
I, I realized I, you got to go back to security yeah. and put them together and manage security. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, right, got, you, got right. this, you got this security police background and you got this facility management uh, new, you know, five years uh, of yeah. experience. So I put them together and went back into contract um, security. Wow. So now I manage, um, you know, security officers, you know, people who, who are in that beginning line of law enforcement or, you know, perhaps they'll never, they may not want to be law enforcement, but right. what they do is the front line of policing, right? Securing properties. So, yeah. Uh, and, I, and that's where I am today. Still, still doing it. Still loving it. So. Yeah. 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 Can you give us an insider look of what it's like to be, to be a police officer that, you know, first, but also to be a black police officer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, keep, keep it in mind the time, right? We're talking late sure. 80s through the 90s, into 2000, early yeah. 2000. Um, I tell you, it, it's, it's uh, as I look back on it, you don't, you, don't, you don't see it when you're in it, right? Yeah, you yeah. You see it when you're in it. I look back on it. Um, you know, we did a lot of things like accepted the norm mm. as a black police officer. It's like, oh, this is the way it is. This is what we do. These mm -hmm. are these are the the communities we focus on because not because uh, who they are, it's because of what they do. <laughs> um, so you 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 find yourself. Uh, mm. And I tell you, I go back, Mark, and I think about some of the comments that have been made to me over the years of, yeah, uh, you're not like them. You know, mm. you're, you're different, Yeah. you, you know, um, you must have had both parents growing up, you know. Oh my uh, gosh, wow. Yeah, so, Stereo so you, stereotype. You, absolutely. And you, you don't wow. even know it. You don't even know it. You just go like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then after a while, you get mentored by somebody who can, you know, wake you up and go, look at what you're doing, you know, look at where you've become, you know, where you are. Yeah. So. Yeah, I want to ask. So let me ask you this: as a as a police officer, clearly you witnessed bias, right? You know, toward sure. toward minorities, um, toward you know, were were black people singled out um, as a population, or you know, or or do you think that it was sort of just widespread um, among different communities? No, no, I. <laughs> You know, we were definitely, black people were definitely singled out, but, but hmm. you didn't know it was because they were black. Hmm. You didn't know it was because they were black. It's because what happened in the black community. Yeah. So as a black officer, I, you know, I felt like I was partaking in this aggressive patrolling, but not, not because the community was black, right. because the community stayed up later at night. Uh, you, <laughs> right. right. You have more yeah. people on the streets in this, this particular neighborhood, and that's where wow. you're that's where your crime was or was reported. Mm. Um, so, so you, you, it, you gravitated toward where the need was, um, yeah. you know, and it just became, it just became the norm. Yeah. Is there something, I mean, I think you, you mentioned it, but is there something in black culture that makes them more, that makes them more a target or, or is it just what you said? you know, like, you know, they're out later, you know, is there something in it that, that makes them more, attract it more? Um, I don't know. I, I, I would say a little bit of yes. Right. Mm. Um, you know, growing up in Alexandria and, and I tell you, Mark, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to part of what got me into it. Yeah. You know, I, just had, I had a bad experience with, with the police. Mm. that truly changed changed my my, my life yeah um, and i remember saying as a as a 14 year old i i'm 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 gonna take your job officer mm. and and i'm gonna show you how to deal with 14 year old black kids in the neighborhood wow and i and i can re and i can remember it and i mean i can remember the whole story um and and, and as my mind sits here and I run through this scenario, I, I, I have to tell the story. If, if time permits, I have to tell the story. So, it can, so uh, I, I was in Alexandria at an uh, uh, area where we hung out. It was a, a skating rink in Alexandria. Yeah, yeah. And, and as a, I'm 14, right? And, 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 and I mean, police are up and down the street. Right? So I learned later on, that's the same thing I did 
you know, in 2000, up and down the same street where I, people were. Yeah. And, and I was approached by a police officer who said, hey, there was a robbery in Old Town, and you look just like the guy that I'm looking for. Mm. Now, 14 years old, no parent call, no nothing. Yeah. The police, the police officer stands there and he says to me, he empties my pockets. I'll never forget, I had $78 in my pocket from a paycheck because I was washing dishes in Old Town. Okay. Wow. I knew I was a good kid. I, I, I knew that if you got the wrong person, and yeah. this person, this officer said to me, if you don't tell me that you did this, if you don't admit to it, I'm going to put you in the back seat with my dog. Mm. And this dog was roaring. He was ready. This dog was hungry. <laughs> oh my God. And I was looking like a good piece of meat. And, and every time I'd say it wasn't me, he would grab that door handle. And I thought, yeah. oh my goodness, I got this. He's, the dog's going to eat me, you know? I mean, yeah. I, I want my mom. I want my dad. I need some help. And, and if you don't tell me, you did it. And I know for a minute, my mind was thinking, okay, so what happens if I tell you I did it? You won't put me in the car with the dog. But I knew that wasn't the right thing to do. And then another police car pulled up. Mm. He made me stand up against the wall. I could see the woman looking out the back seat of the police car and looks at me and says, that's not him. Mm. that's when I left Alexandria and moved to Manassas. Wow. That, that was pretty much my last night, you know, hanging out in, in the inner city. So wow. sorry to go back to that story, but, but that's what, that was the beginning. That was yeah. the beginning. So all of my policing time, you, you talk about gravitating toward, you know, black people was, yeah. they, they, we did the same thing that the officer did to me pretty much. You go mm. to the areas where there are people where where there's a need for for uh, supervising communities. Mm. So I don't think it was just because they were black. I just think that, you know, that's what we did. We didn't have big houses to have house parties. Right, right. You, know, you couldn't you couldn't just say, hey, come to my pool party, yeah. and then have all these twenty kids in your backyard. You know, we went, you know, to places where everybody gathered, where they all felt comfortable. Yeah. 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 No, ma that makes sense. That right? makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> while you were, while you were a police officer, um, you, you talk about the things that you did, but I would imagine that there were some things that you also did to sort of combat that kind of bias as well. What were, what were some of those things that you did? <laughs> to make sure I understand the, make sure I understand the question. Right? You mean like, how did I respond to, to when I was uh, taught to, to, to be biased or, yes. I mean, what, what, what did I, what did I do? Yes. Well, one is, you, first of all, you do your job, right? Yeah. You definitely do your job. And then you, and then you, you make sure you treat people with respect and you, you, mm -hmm. you get them to understand that treat me as the man, forget the uniform. You know, I'm, I'm Walter, I'm officer Powell and I'm here to help you. Um, you, yeah. you, you, you gotta get that, you know, you, the person that you're talking to has got to see that. We used to have a saying, and I, I wish I had thought about it saying, um, the, the, the man makes the uniform, the uniform don't make the man or some, something like that. We used yeah. to repeat that, you know, right, we, right. Be, be, being people that were, you know, of my liking people who grew up in the city. Now remember, I grew yeah. up in this city where I'm policing. So I had to, I had to communicate on a different level. Mm. I could not, could not. Not, I, I, I could not allow the community to, uh, to call me, you know, or Uncle Tom or a, you forgot right. where you came from, right? Mm. I couldn't allow that. Wow. Okay? Because remember, my family was still there. I mean, it's, yeah. it's I've, I've got to respect the community in order to get respect back. So mm -hmm. uh, people would see me and go, oh, hey, it's the guy that used to live over there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that helped a lot. And that's, that's how I kind of avoided the the biases you know i just just dealt with a person as a person yeah and i asked them to do the same do the same for me yeah what kind of reputation did you have uh, on the street versus <laughs> your your peers um i i i, I probably was considered uh, i remember some people teasing me saying you know you you're too nice you're soft mm -hmm. you know um you know why don't you um you know don't let that guy I actually, and uh, I remember officers saying, hey, don't let that guy 
uh, hang out on your block. You know, we used to say, hey, this is my neighborhood. You know, I'm I'm the officer, you know, it's mine. <laughs> And wow. you guys can't hang out on my corner. It, it, was, it was mine. It was mine. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, I don't know. That's just the way we did it, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And I remember being told, hey, hey, man, I saw that guy, man. He's hanging out in your neighborhood. They used to say it to me all the time. You know, the, the officers that worked later than I did. So, hey, I saw, you know, I saw Frankie in your neighborhood last night. Yeah. So, so now when I see Frankie, I got to kind of say, hey, Frankie, don't hang out in my neighborhood. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just kind of it's just kind of the way it was. It's just kind of the way it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about on the street? Like with with people that you within the community. We go back to the original question. I, so, I think so I what was your reputation in your? Oh, community okay, okay. So, so the 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 kids, if I may call them. The kids. I, the, yeah. the, the the kids actually would nicknamed me Uncle P. Right, my last name being Powell. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I had this community that I grew up in as a young um, um, child. And I, and I went back and that was, that was my neighborhood. And I, I was a community officer. So that's all I did. I mean, that was my neighborhood every day. Went mm -hmm. to the same community every day. I'd ride a bicycle, stand on the corner, walk up and down, walk alleys, eat dinner at people's houses, right? Yeah. And, wow. and I, before you know it, it was... It, not just the good kids. I mean, the bad kids would use the term as well, right? Yeah, the yeah. kids that were out there doing what they shouldn't do. They, yeah. They'd see me in the alley. Uncle P, hey, how are you? How are you? And I was like, hey. <laughs> so now my friends had good names. My friends had like, you know, you know, uh, Superman-like names, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. RoboCop, you know, and, and, and the Pac-Mans. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right, Uncle P. So you know what? It's yeah, I wasn't then I wasn't real proud of my nickname because as officers, other officers asked, so what do they call me? When I said Uncle P, it's like Yeah. Like you're too friendly with him. Too know? close. Yeah, you're too close. But yeah. I wasn't too close. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Wow. Wow. Well and, and that and that speaks a lot to to your character and your ability to to weigh your responsibilities while at the same time being respectful of the people that you're, you're over, overseeing or protecting, right? Or, you know, you were real, I think it sounds like you were, you got into police work in order to be a guardian, right? Mm -hmm. Not a warrior, there's a, there's a distinction between the two, uh, but rather a guardian, a protector. Um, and, and I think that says a lot about your, about your character and, and the way that you approached it. Um, as you look at, as you look at today's situations, as you look at, you know, what's happened with, um, with police work today or how it's been portrayed in the media, um, what's, what's, what's your reaction to the latest events against a uh, black man at the hands of police? Um, we weren't ready for this. We really weren't mm -hmm. ready to police ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, right? Um, uh, things we things that we thought were were normal and okay, yeah, uh, were were totally wrong. The concept of of policing, the concept of shoot don't shoot, you know, right? I mean, we were we were wrong. I mean, we were we were. We were only in our time. We were only reacting to our time. Mm. Um, we weren't. We weren't ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Policing wasn't ahead of the curve. It was with the curve. It was on it, right? We were re totally reacting to what the community, what we thought the community wanted. We yeah. weren't thinking ahead. You know, um, uh, it's it's. I mean, this the the, the policing concepts were just dealing with what you saw right in front of you. We weren't thinking about how it, you know, like, think it, we, we, here was our forward thinking. Mm. Whoever came up with the idea of, of a, a citizen academy, where citizens would do a mock police academy to see what it was like yeah. to be trained, we thought that was forward thinking. Mm. Well, all we were doing was letting them see why we think the way we think. We were mm -hmm. still thinking, we were still thinking a little off curve. You know yeah. I mean? so we were showing them what we were, what we were taught, but, we still weren't learning the, the tools, the things that we needed. I want to I draw from a couple of media examples. One of them is George Floyd. 
um, when you look at a situation like that in, in particular, um, in your view, what happened in the George Floyd situation from a policing perspective? Were the police officers just doing what they were trained to do? Is it bad policing? Was it fear? Is it adrenaline or, or something else? What's your, so, like, just, just so, let's, let's look at George Floyd, that situation for just a moment. So in, in my opinion, number one, the other officers on the scene didn't realize that what this one guy was doing could result in death, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. We're not trained to realize that action could result in death. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that was missing. We, we're not trained on that, okay? Mm -hmm. Secondly, that's him. That ain't me. He did that, I didn't, okay? Mm -hmm. We were not taught the responsibility of each other, mm -hmm. right? We were not taught that when we see this, we have to react, not, not just to the bad guy, but to the good guy. We have to say, we're not trained. We were, we were not trained to say, get off of him. You're doing it improperly. Your technique is not approved. We were taught to go, hey, when they call me in and ask me, what did I see? I'm gonna tell the truth. Don't, you know, I'm not gonna lie. That, that's how we dealt with guys like him, the officers. We simply said, uh, somebody will go back and say, hey, sorry, I just want you to know he had his knee on his neck. I just want, I, I don't want no part of it. You have people like that. And then you have people who just sit back and go, they asked me, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And then of course you had your few that was just, uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh so, I, and, and you know, that's the, that Ben Bulani talk about, right? You know, we're all out there to, to try to help and do things better. Yeah. And not get to hurt each other. So that, that's the hard part is, is, you know, it's which side are you on, you know? Which right. side are you on? You know, this guy was a bad guy. Yeah, something bad happened. But, but as we see today, we've got to police ourselves. We've mm. got to say, hey, stop. No, you stop. Bad guy, give me a minute. Let me talk to my partner. Partner, put your gun away. You know, you, we have to be taught to do that. Yeah. That hasn't been taught. And that's why that, that happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that happened. Wow. From a, from a police, from a police technique perspective, the guy's knee is on the guy's neck. Okay. For eight, eight minutes and Seven, 742, 746 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they recounted actually, it was started off at eight. They, 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 they ran the tape back and came oh, back it? and said it was actually seven <laughs> minutes and 40 some seconds. Take long. But, but, but still like, is it from a technique perspective, is it proper tech? I mean, is it just proper technique to like to have your neck on have sorry to have your knee on somebody's neck? I've never been taught that actually. Yeah, I've, I've never been taught under any circumstance um, that that's the technique to use. It's funny. I I, I pitch. I go back to my training, mm -hmm. and I remember handcuffing and blading your side and putting your knees, but it was always between the shoulder blade. It was I just mm -hmm. I never recall. Now we've never been trained to do that. That's, yeah. That's just, you know, that's what one person chooses to do. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not training. Yeah. Uh, no, th thank you for that. I, I think that that's helpful because, you know, as I look at it, so I, and, 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 and I've, done, I've done a little bit of consulting with law enforcement, actually. And, and one of the things that I learned is that in a, in a threat situation or in a, in a situation of high stress or where there could be potentially be a threat, you put the threat down clearly the threat was down right? right so you know like there's and there were and <laughs> he had backup it's not like he was alone right? right right so if we were to look at it forensically it just i feel like wow there's just a lot that went wrong in that particular situation right you, yeah. you know and um wow so i want to look i want to talk about another situation that happened just recently rayshard brooks you're, you're familiar with the with the case the, uh, the Atlanta case right the Atlanta case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so si similar situation, but it starts out, starts out, fr you know, okay, falls asleep. He's drunk at, in a Wendy's drive through The police are called probably, you know, probably an excessive, you know, response to that situation. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Called the guy an Uber, you know, but you, you probably saw, you probably saw what happened. Um, he, you know, he, you know, actually, 
you know, tased one of the one of the officers, and like so, it escalated. It escalated very badly, mm-hmm. and then and then they ended up shooting him. Um, again, from a from a technical police work perspective, walk us through that. You know, what did they do right? Did they do wrong? I mean, is is a ta- is a taser a, a a a deadly threat weapon? You know, like, so t- 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 you know, talk us through that just from a technical police work perspective. Wow, this this is a this is a tough one. Mm. It, re- it really is a tough one. Um, it really is tough. But it goes back to you know what you're trained to do and how much time you have to process things in your brain. Yeah. How much time do you really have? Mm. I, I mean, for me, Monday morning quarterback is easy. I can sit back and watch it Monday morning and go, "Yeah, why did this even go this far?" Right? Yeah. Number one, why? Why are we here? The guy is speaking clearly, falls asleep. Robotic policing, robotic policing. I don't know you, and I'm gonna. I know that the law says that if you if the, the keys are readily available, and you're in behind the wheel, even though your car is not moving. That I can make a DWI arrest, mm. and, and that's all you're thinking is I've got all the elements of a crime, and I'm going to make this, and I'm going to be a hero, and I'm going to, you know, check it off that I, I I locked him up. Yeah, that's the first thing is, is why not help him? When I take the whole different approach and go, all right, forget the DWI. I, I don't even care about DWI. I got you. The car's not moving, guy let's get you where you need to be. Mm. Let's get you help. Call some, they, they, actually, Rashad was right. He's like, hey, I'm, 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 can you call some? I'm right down the block. I mean, he's speaking clearly. Yeah. We shouldn't have, as law enforcement, allowed that to escalate. We should have let it stay here. Mm. We should have let it stay here. But that's me Monday morning quarterbacking, right? That's me going Monday morning quarterbacking. Now, we don't do that. Yeah. So then, it's, then it escalates, and we want to make the arrest. Now, yeah. certainly. If it was me on either side. If I'm behind the wheel of the car, I'm going to cooperate. I'm, I'm me personally, how I grew up, who I am. Mm. I'm going to go, this is what I have to do. Um, but I don't expect him to be me. Same thing, the officer. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have shot, okay? But that's me. Right. But, but when, when, you're, when you're thinking you're doing police work and you think you're doing it the way you were trained and you got a person that was, you, had, thought, you thought you had in custody, starts to run from you, turns to shoot at you, can your brain really say, hey, even if you shoot me, that thing can't hurt me? Mm. Or can it? His training is, don't let that object hit me. I'll be done. Mm. And then I'll lose. And then I don't get to go home tonight. Yeah. I can't judge him for making that kind of thought process, you know, having that thought process and making the wrong decision to shoot. I'm, I know. I know. I, I retired from an injury. Yeah. Of the guy that I could have shot. I, I didn't shoot I, because I didn't, it wasn't the right time. And I'm fortunate to make that right decision. So we could be sitting here talking about, and remember the case with Powell back right. in 2005 when he shot an unarmed guy. Right, right. So, so I made the right decision and I don't want to judge him for making the wrong. Mm. That's a tough decision to make. Yeah. Very tough decision to make. And I, I think if he was trained better, Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. But how can you train for a scenario that you don't ever can ever imagine? I just right. couldn't imagine being in a training academy or scenario and they say, and then the guy takes your taser and runs away. <laughs> That's where the training would stop. Is the training would stop with would you shoot him as he runs away with your taser? And then everybody in the class would go, yeah, 90, 99% of the class would go, no, no, you know, let him go. You know, you got his driver's license, his car, go get your taser the next day. When he, right. Right. <laughs> right. But I couldn't imagine the training instructor having the forethought to say, but what if he turned and shot that taser toward you? Mm. Can you process? Is he a good shot? Is the taser really aimed at me? Is it just aimed in the air to scare me? Mm. Now that he's aimed it to scare you, is that enough to shoot him? I can't yeah. train for that. You know what I mean? You could try to train for it. So therefore I choose not to judge. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah. Too much unless 
the officer was really equipped with the tools to make the right decision. Yeah. That, that was tough. That yeah. was tough. Yeah. It really was, it really was a tough one. A lot of us, a lot of, especially, you know, black officers, and I've talked to many of them. Yeah. Some of us says, man, he shouldn't have shot that guy. And the other are going, if he had shot at you, you think, I mean, you, you, you know, the gun can, you know, that can put you on the ground. Right. And we, and we, we're, we're kind of like 50, 50 with it. We're like, I don't think I'd have taken the shot. I know I wouldn't have taken the shot. Mm. I, in fact, I wouldn't have gave chase. Yeah. 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 Just so, let him get so one, thing, go, right? one, thing you, one thing you learn when you get this is <laughs> I'm going to call my buddies back at the department and they're going to bring out this big tank. They're going to catch you at three o'clock in the morning sleep. Right. And then we're going to make an arrest. I'm not going to chase you when I know who you are. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. That's, but, yeah. But that's, that's from growing up in the community and seeing mm -hmm. the other side of it. You know, that's not. I, I, I can't expect everybody to feel that way. Everybody wants to chase and say, I got them. But I, I, I credit, I mean, white and black officers who taught me early on, where's it going to go? Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, a kid runs from, where's it going to go? Then you go get a warrant for that. I mean, you know, you get them later. You know, <laughs> live the fight another day. <laughs> Everything doesn't have to be to the end, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you think this, how do you think situations like this are going to impact police departments in the future from a I'll just say from a training perspective or should impact them from a training perspective we're going to take a lot of steps back to move forward mm -hmm. but in the end we're going to win right we're going to we're going to learn to respond better we're going to learn how people are different you know, mm -hmm. so many times people say you know you got to treat everybody the same. I mean, we all talk that, right? Yeah. Treat everybody yeah. the same. Yeah. No, no, you really can't. And I've said this for years, and I've actually been accused of being a, a chameleon, right? A person who twitches. Like one day you talk to Walter, or you can see him talk to this person, and then talk to a different person. I don't treat people the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't treat people the same. You'll make a mistake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You pull, you pull over a white male, 40 years old, drunk. You treat him just like that 40 year old black male that's drunk, you're gonna have a different outcome. Mm. You better be equipped to deal with both differently. Not, not that one deserves a different treatment from the other. Yeah. They're different. You gotta know how to communicate with the person you're dealing with because their life experiences are different. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you, you understand? You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta know how to read people. It's just, you gotta know how to, to to respond to that person, not everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't treat an 80 year old woman who goes into her purse to get an inhaler the same way you treat a 30 year old woman who goes into her purse. You know, you, what, what are you getting out of your purse? I mean, I can assure you that 80 year old lady is not going in there to get anything that's gonna hurt you. <laughs> so don't hurt her, don't slam her on the ground. And that's what we do. Yeah. We train for the scenario. We don't, we don't, we don't process the totality of circumstances. Let, let's look at the whole picture. Yeah. So I think in policing, I think we will, I think we'll take a step back. I think we'll take a huge hit within the community. I think a lot of good cops will retire and be afraid. They'll be eligible and they'll go, you know what? I'm going to go do what Walt did. I'm going to go into private security and get out of this policing. I think we'll pick up a unique batch. I say unique, not bad, but unique batch of officers for a while, right? Mm -hmm. We'll have all these these officers who probably uh, would have been, I don't know, I don't, clerks, psychologists, you know, um, going to school to get their, you know, to become a medical doctor. And, and they're like, you know what, I'll, I'll please, and I'll give that softer, and I'm not, I don't even need a gun. You know, that mm -hmm. mentality of, I'm just here to help. And then yeah. we'll take a step back. <laughs> then we'll learn how to deal with people and then we'll see the new new policing comes on yeah. with, a, with, with a combination of both yeah and we'll we'll then restore order and i say restore because we're gonna lose it yeah we're gonna lose it we're gonna step back and we're gonna lose some order but but law enforcement will win yeah we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll learn to respond we'll, we'll we'll learn better how to respond yeah like by, by, by things like this you know yeah. people like you, you know, mm -hmm. cutting the light on. 
So. Yeah, yeah. And, and some people have, have talked about defunding police, you know, like, mm-hmm. and even in, and have gone so far in Seattle, for example, they said made it like a no police zone, like, like you know, we've taken over, the people have taken over. It's like, right, we had right. a mini Bolshevik revolution in Seattle, like, what the heck is going on? You know, yeah. so defunding police, what do you think? Is that, is that even a viable solution? Um, no. Or is it? No, no. Now you 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 can't defund the police, but but what you have to do is you have to use a term to get the attention mm. of what it means to defund. I, mm. I, I I like it, right? Mm. If you said, um, imagine the writing on the wall, the graffiti was not defund the police, but it was, hey, reallocate ten percent of the police funding and put it into social and recovery. Right, right. <laughs> That's, nobody's gonna read that, right? Defund yeah. the police. It's the attention. Yeah. And that's what's needed. You need to say it so you'll so you'll come down. Mm-hmm. Aim aim high and miss. Right. 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 Aim high and miss is okay, rather than aiming low and hitting it. So mm-hmm. so defunding the police is just aiming high. Yeah. It's not going to happen, right? Uh, some 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 departments will make some adjustments so they can say, hey, we've taken forty thousand dollars of police funding and we've put it into community based, you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking. Now, now we're doing it. But just point blank saying pull out. What are we crazy? Yeah. And we're here to protect the weak and the innocent. That's what we do. Mm. You know what I mean? You you can't pull out. But defunding is not pulling out. You're saying let's look at how you're spending your money. Is it the most appropriate way? And that's what defunding the police is all about. It's not, it cannot be about, take those guys off the clock. How many cops you got on the street? 20? We only need but two. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. It's yeah. not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you were to give advice to either local, state, or national leaders about law enforcement, about different improvements to make to law enforcement everywhere what sort of general advice would you give them well a, a lot of it we do now right is 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 we we hire from within our communities right is is almost you can almost guarantee a kid a job you know and you catch him at 12 and, and catch him at 12 when, when you can say to him you want to be a police officer at 21 here's you're going to start now at 12 you're going to you're going to enter these programs and, mm-hmm. you know, right? you're going to learn early and, and then you and then automatically we're, we're bringing you on because we've 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 matured you you know we've we've massaged you we've taught you um the way and and, and you're from your own community you're from we, we we try to do that but what happens during recruitment is a kid tells you you know yeah okay so let's let's just use local dc um kid grows up in southeast dc and at yeah. just 22, 21 years old, he decides I want to be a police officer. And the police officer uh, recruiter looks at him and goes, says, hey, you smoked marijuana back in 2012. You're done. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have a you don't have a bachelor's degree, you're done. And then and then you just missed a kid that would have made some incredible changes in his community. Yeah. See, so we gotta we got we gotta we gotta help these local kids mm-hmm. become police officers because not everybody made the right decision at 14 15 16 years old <laughs> right right okay? and then we say nah nah, nah. You, 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 you. i have a good friend who's a recruiter and it's just some of the things we talk about that uh you know people he believed could would be a great cop and and you know his you know people above him say oh, i don't i don't like this background here you know i don't like this you know when he was 12 he you know, my, my son, my, my, my very own son who, yeah. who applied for a, um, a department mm-hmm. and, and he had uh, posted a, a video of a, of a music group that, that has guns on their videos. Yeah. And that's it. You're done, kid. But I know my kid's a good kid, but he didn't make it. Yeah. See? So, yeah. So, so you gotta, you know, you know, you gotta, uh, Let's just think about you know uh, who you're recruiting because 
Because let me tell you, my opinion of an officer, I don't know if this is one of your questions, but my opinion of it reminds me of, reminds me of, I think it's Spider-Man. I think it's Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not the right he uh, hero or character. But whatever's in you, oh, maybe it's the Hulk. Whatever's in you, when, when you get this gamma ray or this spider bite, you know, and it makes you, it just magnifies what's already in there. Mm. When you put on a uniform, it doesn't change you. It brings out what's in there. Yeah. It makes you stronger, right? It doesn't take, you, you, don't, you don't get a, uh, I don't know, you don't get an apple. You put a police uniform on it, and all of a sudden it goes outside and it's some orange. It becomes a juicy apple. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> right, that's, right. And that's what happens, right? So you're not hiring these kids from your, within the community that know how to deal with the community. Yeah. Right? You're hiring kids from outside the community who's never been exposed to what the kids inside the community. And then you put that uniform and then you send that apple into, you know, a community that's not ready for this big juicy apple because now his head is big and I got this big uniform on right. and I read all the books on how to do this and they're responding correctly. Mm. Yeah. So I, I honestly, I would just say, you know, to, to departments, you know, focus on your, your community, your, your neighborhood kids, um, not just looking for the ones. And here's the other thing, right? If I can share yeah. that often we, we, we look for the ones that float to the top. Yeah. We just wait for it to float. Right. And then we scoop it off the top. We yeah. want that cream, but we want to turn it. We don't want to make it. Right. We want to, we want to take what floats on its own. Yeah. I think yeah. if we get in that barrel and churn it, you know, and, and make some changes, we'll see a lot more floaters. Right, right. Right. And and then you you take on a different role actually as protectors of the community because you are in the community. You're not just you're not just policing it, you're not just monitoring it, you're not just the warrior on duty. You are you're cultivating the community. You know, you know the community. You you're a part of the community. It, it changes your role entirely, what you're outlining. Absolutely. Uh, no, absolutely. That's, that's, that's so important. You, uh, you go to the cookout in the community and not because you're the cop. You don't go in uniform. You just go. <laughs> right. Right? right? Like, like, so as a community officer, they would invite you to a cookout, but you thought, I got to go in uniform because I still got to be. Yeah. No, it's my day off. You've invited me. I'm coming. And then all your friends there would go, hey, isn't that Officer Charlie from the corner block store? You know? yeah, yeah, he's one of us. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah. yeah. But we, we, give, we, we worry so much about what people see about and think about us because you were over that guy's house or you were talking yeah. to him on the corner. I thought you were a police officer. Why were you at, you know, the Johnsons? Why were you at the Powells? Mm -hmm. Officer Jones, why were you at the Powells? They're bad people. Well, they invited me to their cookout and I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't go in, and I didn't go in uniform to to maintain the level of authority that, that right we're doing today. Right, right. Yeah, be part yeah. of the community. Yeah. So, uh, and you you were you actually mentioned your son, and uh, so you you have you have you know a few kids, um, and they're all adult age or yes. close to adult age. Um, did you ever feel like you had to sit down with your kids and say, "All right, kids." Because we are black, this is 100%. what you should. This is what you should expect in society. Did you ever? Hundred percent. Like, yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Really? T 100%. Tell me about that. Well, I mean, I, I can't say when I was white, I saw it differently, right? But I knew as a cop, I know. Hey, we 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 believe because of what the little we see that that black people are aggressive. They're faster and stronger. So you, 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 you kind of respond differently. So we, I tell my kids, hey, you get pulled over. I don't care what the cop says. I don't care if he, I don't care if he calls you the N word. If I don't care if he tells you I'm here to rob you. You say, hey, whatever you need, I'm, I'm, I'm here to cooperate. Mm -hmm. You record everything you remember, right? And then you live the fight another day. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, you take your facts down to, his, to, the, to, to the department, you report it. You can't beat him. You cannot beat an officer on a scene. Mm. And, and, and that's what I'm seeing today. People are trying to beat the officer on the scene. 
mm. they're trying to beat I'm going to beat you. No, what you just said to me, no, that's wrong. I'm going to fight. Then it gets out of control. You know? Yeah. I mean, we, have, we have to look at cameras ourselves. You know, police work cameras, <laughs> a citizen. Yeah, put your little camera on. And then just go back and go. And don't go, I got you on camera. Because that's going to make him react, right? Right, go right. Back. Yes, sir. What, yes. should I sit here? Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, like I, I almost want to share a story with you that I probably shouldn't, but I will. Please. I hope you can edit and delete this one. No, but, no, no, but, please. But, but I had a friend call me up, uh, a relative call me up and uh, say, hey, I had a situation here with DWI. You know, is there anything you can do to help me? I was like, well, no, but, but let me come and get your car and, you know, save your hundred bucks on the tow fee and you know, all this good stuff, right? So I, I, go, I go to the scene and drive out, uh, identify myself and say to the officer, hey, I'm just here to help it's my family member. Mm. Um, I just want to, you know, my wife and I are together. We'll take the car home. Mm -hmm. You guys, As a matter of fact, he's already gone. You already got him. And the officer, the officer said, No, no, you're not taking the car. I'm, I'm telling it. What? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm trying to rationalize with him. I'm like, Hey, why? Yeah. I, you know, let, let us take the car home. And no, I said, okay, let me speak to the lieutenant. Let me speak to a supervisor if I could. Mm -hmm. I kid you not, this officer, it's a white officer. Yeah. I need backup. I got a hostile. <gasps> I kid you not. What? So, so I, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, you don't think I heard that? So when the supervisor pulled up, mm. I was already seated. I was sitting on the curb. Wait, mm -hmm. just wait. Supervisor pulled up. See, experience though. Experience taught me this, right? Now I'm the other. I'm on the other side now. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the other side. Supervisor comes, walks up, goes to the officer first. Now, I know that if it wasn't me, I would have ran to the supervisor and said, "I'm the one who called for you. Mm -hmm. Hey, talk to me first. Mm -hmm. That would have appeared to have been hostile." Yeah. So I waited my turn. And I'm, I'm picturing the supervisor going, so where, where's the hostile guy? Oh, he's the big quiet guy sitting over in the corner, right? <laughs> Lieutenant walks over. Lieutenant walks over. I, I shake his hand. Yeah. I shake yeah. his hand. Yeah. I, I tell him my experience. I'm not asking for professional courtesy. Mm. I, I, I tell him who I am. Tell him where I'm retired from. Mm -hmm. And I explain. He says, hey, the owner of the vehicle is here. The driver's gone. I'll drive that car home because the owner is giving me the permission. Mm -hmm. Didn't take the supervisor, who's also white. Didn't take him. A, didn't take him thirty seconds to say. He looked right at the officer and said, "Why can't he take her car home?" Yeah. Where Where are the keys? Took the keys from the officer and handed them right to me and said, "Sorry, have a good night." That cop gets in the car, speeds off, ticket booked on top of the car. Goes flying away. If I wasn't prepared to deal with that, mm. the results would have been different. I would have responded differently. I would have been upset because I knew I was right. Yeah. So I, I was able to teach myself how to respond at that moment. But I can tell you now, nobody else would have. They would have said, you're making a really bad mistake, cop, and would have been upset and upset and would have verbalized how upset they were. And yeah. then the coward says, this guy's disorderly. This guy's, mm -hmm. you know, he's a, in my face. He's aggressive. Mm -hmm. But who was right and who was wrong? Yeah. So, so what I teach my kids, back to the original topic, is, is you got to humble yourself. Mm. You got to humble yourself and fight another day. And my time there was not to fight right there for those keys, was to, to speak to the supervisor when he gets here. And I'm not gonna be this irate person that you just told him I was on the air. Yeah. All the police cars came around. I was like, back off, this is funny. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's training that that officer that I hope he got. You know, that's what I said to the supervisor. He says, I said, hey, no complaints. Just watch his camera. If you just review his his video of our encounter, and then respond the way you guys like. To, you know, 
talk to him the way. I, I don't need to follow up. And I, I don't know whatever happened, but I can assure you, he went back and said, let me watch this. Why are you talking to the citizen like this? Right. You're lucky the citizen didn't get upset because that's what we do. Honestly, that's what we do. We get upset. Mm. You just respected me. That's something that we all should learn about black people. Mm. Don't mess with my children. Yep. And don't disrespect me. Yeah. And that goes back. It goes back to, to slavery and being free. And then, so, you know, now we are able to get respect and don't disrespect me. Don't call me boy. You know, mm. it, it all comes back, comes forward to today. Mm -hmm. When I walked up to him, just don't disrespect me. And often we are disrespecting our citizens. And that's why black people, wow. kind of, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot to it. Right? Okay? That's, that's just, it's just amazing. And, and I think, and, and this, this, why, this is why I felt like, yes, I absolutely have to have Walter on the podcast because this is a perspective that people don't hear. They don't, they, all they hear is the headline, you know, black man killed by white police officer. And it's like, well, that doesn't help, right? I mean, it, obviously, I mean, that's what happened, but it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. And, but what you're sharing is the reason why, the reason why, you know, Ray Shard may have gotten, may have escalated is because there is, there's, there's something deep seated mm -hmm. in him and not just in him, but in his culture, in his people, in his family that, that, that demands respect. That if you speak that language, if you speak the language of respect, man, you're just going to go so much further, you know, so than, much further. You know, not, not just, just to mention, imagine Rashad sitting there going, oh, no, I'm not going to put your knee on my neck. I'm not going to let this happen. Right, right. I mean, this is, this is getting ready to happen to me. I see four or five cops. It's going to be me. I'm going to die. I got to go. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. That's why you can't. That's why. What, a, what an incredible, what an incredible story. Thank you. No, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so I want to, I want to talk a little bit. I want to kind of shift it a little bit and, and, and thank you for sharing about what you, what you do with, with your children as well. You know, so you're, you're no stranger to, to racism, right? You're no stranger to uh, norms in in different in, in the police in in police work you know where you know where you, well this is just what we do these are the populations that we police and monitor you know you you're no you're no stranger to these things where where you were able to keep your head you know for i mean for decades right you were able to keep your your head about you and how and i've known you for a very long time how is it that you have not become resentful because by all rights you you should be um i honestly i, I say it's my faith okay mm. it's, it's, it's my belief um yeah g good wins all the time all all the time yeah and um i there's just you just you just got to stay positive you, you know you have to you have to say no matter what, and, and my t my kids will tease me sometimes because I'll, you know, things will be crashing, and I'll be like, let's look at the bright side. Yeah, you, know, you really have to say, we wouldn't be here if we didn't go there. Right. You got to You got to look at the, the bright side. If you if you stay in the negative, it's just going to you become part of the problem. Mm. You be, you become part of the problem. So, just staying positive, and and I and, and you know it's funny I say this all the time, and I actually found myself saying it. To a couple of police officers that sit here today is is this too will pass. <laughs> mm. This too will pass. So yeah, you know, just 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 believe that it'll get better. Yeah, it'll get better. What do you think it will take for us to become enlightened and aware of of racial issues in our society to become woke? if you will. Well, it's what we're doing now, mm. honestly. Yeah, I, um, I, I know uh, our president doesn't like it, but mm -hmm. um, standing up and, and, and collectively sharing your voice by protest, 
Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's truly opening the eyes of many, of many. Yeah. Um, Mark, not even myself uh, uh, saw anything wrong with, you know, Theodore Roosevelt on a horse and a black guy on here. And I didn't, five years ago, I didn't see nothing wrong with it. Mm. Abraham Lincoln and the slave, I, you don't, you're in it. You're in it. You're in the forest, you know? Right, right. You realize, what, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. How are we locking ourselves to that time? Why is that statue so important? Right, right. Okay, maybe, maybe it was important when you made it, but a year later, it's outdated. That kid is no longer on his knees, man. He's standing up. He's probably six five, you know, looking at the president in his eyes, shaking his hand. That's what we want. Right. We don't want to be remembered for being on the grid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just uh, things we don't see. We're doing things right now that ten years from now we're gonna be like, I can't believe that uh, you know. Yeah. They were on, on a Zoom call. Right. So, right. Uh, so unacceptable. <laughs> so unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. We don't know, but back then that was wrong. Right, right. We we got to think. We got to start forward thinking. We really got to start thinking ahead. Yeah, we really do. What do you think of movements like Black Lives Matter? <sighs> um, necessary. Mm. I, I I really do. Um, but that but that's because it's today, and I'm seeing I'm seeing change, and and they're teaching me Black Lives Matter. I, listen, it was, if I saw somebody with a Black Lives Matter, ooh, radical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, whoa, you're making change. Yeah. I'm thinking about putting that on my tags, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> because because yeah. they they really have um they overshot it. Yeah. Yeah. They overshot. It. Right. But but they really brought to light a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes. If you aim for the target, you miss it. You, you, you're down, you're too low. Yeah, yeah. They, over, they overshot with Black Lives Matter mm. a year ago when they were tagging DC Black Lives Matter everywhere and you see spray paint everywhere with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. It's just, it was too much, but they were overshooting it. Now it's landing right in the area where it needs to be. It's catching the attention of the mayor. Black Lives Matter Boulevard or, or you know, uh, you know um, the street she renamed, you know, and right. painting. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. You know, it's 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 awesome. And it's it's a old it's old teaching. I mean, there's 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 more than one way to take a tree down, right? You got a tree here and everybody's trying to push it. Why don't you try to pull that thing down? Right. <laughs> you know, you can be a portion and pushing and it's not coming down. Well, it's not yeah. pushing it, pull it. Yeah. And get the same result. And that's what she's doing. She's pulling. Yeah. And she's joining. She's saying, Hey, let's 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 look at what you're saying. Mm. And that, that to me is, is uh, where we need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask you kind of a big question. How do we as a society end racism? Uh, it's not gonna happen. Hmm. I, I, I know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very positive person, but one thing I can tell you, I just don't see it. Years and years from now, it'll be forgotten. Yeah. It'll be forgotten, right? Years and years from now. But there are a lot of people who are taught to hate us. Mm. Who are taught to hate, right? Yeah. And I remember what my father taught me. My son remembers what I taught him. He'll teach his son. Mm. And there's a large group of people who are doing the same thing, but they're teaching hate. Mm. You can't, you cannot change that it's 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 extremely difficult yeah to change so so through time perhaps it'll be done yeah but as long as we look different mm. we'll be treated differently mm. that's that's the way it is yeah. now now what you got to do is just simply you know represent who you are yeah and people will treat you as who you are yeah that's yeah. it that's it. Don't 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 give them any. Don't give them, um, don't give them power over you. Mm. Stand tall. Command. Respect. It was a demand. You know, to say you're going to respect me. They're going to respect you because of the way you're treating them. Yeah. And then we'll we'll and then we'll make it. But will it ever go away? In this country? No, because we we have a different background. 
And you can't change history. Right. You, you can't change what happened. Yeah. Uh, and, and in other countries, you, you, they, it gets better and better because everybody's from there. Mm-hmm. Everybody has the same story. Yeah. Whether even, even, even the ones whose skin color is darker, you still have the same story. Okay. You know, you talk, right? You, you, yeah. you, look, at, you look at Central America, South America, right? And, and within their communities, they think they, they think they have the same issue. We have black people that are, in, that are from our country, that are from, you know, right. yeah. were they slaves at one time? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't do that to them. <laughs> you know, we didn't know. They just yeah. darker. It ain't because we're dark. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people want to be dark. It ain't because we're dark. It's because of the history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and until they, until people figure that out, you know, they're always gonna they're gonna be treated differently because of the history. The history can't go away. It can't it can't go away? It's always gonna be there. Hundred years from now, somebody will say, hey, "You didn't say that because I'm black, did you?" You know, it's you got to check it. <laughs> yeah, because of my ancestors. What what what, what did that comment mean? Mm. It's gonna always be there, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So I want to I want to shift the conversation a little bit to to present day and and what you're doing today. Um, you've made the transition to security and and you've made it a very successful career doing that. Um, so you know since since leaving public service, um, you know now you're a security expert. In recent days, some of the properties that you protect have actually been ground zero for some of the protests, riots, and, and, and some of the violence. I'm curious to know, how do, you, how do you lead in a time of crisis? Well, you know, you, you take all the tools that you've learned over the years mm-hmm. of, of, of critical thinking, of organizing, right, yeah. and, and making the best decision, putting things in place, not waiting for them to come to you. It's going to them, right? You know, we don't. I don't. I don't wait until, you know, the the building has been vandalized and crashed. I I, I got to get in front of it. Yeah. I got to put some spotters on the roof. You know, I got to put some boards up. I got to be proactive, mm. right? And be ready for this. It's you know, all the signs are there that we're in. Uh, you know, we're on ground zero. We're here. Right. So just just my experience from policing. Thank goodness. Yeah. And from managing, make the best decision. Mm-hmm. You know, be, be be manage it, be in front of it. Don't don't wait until it's you know understanding broken window theory, understanding why it's so important. Yeah. You know, um, to 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 attack that graffiti. I mean, my building got hit last night with graffiti, mm-hmm. and I'm already on it. I'm not waiting to go back to work Monday morning to get with my facilities people to say, hey, I need this off. You know, hey, I'm like, hey, right now. You know, Saturday morning, we got tagged last night. Can we get a crew there today? Yeah. Because I don't want them to come back and go, oh, this is a good place to tag. I want to be tagged on top of his tag. And I don't like Black Lives Matter, so I'm going to cross it out and put, no, no, let's get on it. Let's get on it. You got to care. You got to care. One, one thing um, I treat my security um, um, career path, just like I treated my, my law enforcement mm-hmm. career. It was a career path and not a job. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it was, I'm all in. I'm all in. I say to my boss all the time, you know, they'll say, oh, I know it's late. Well, can we get this project? I said, boss, I'm all in. You know, it's, it's I don't, my clock don't stop. What's next? Give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's not because I, I want to be better than the next guy and I don't want nobody to take my job. It's who I am. I'm all in. I want, I want it to be nice. I want it to be right. You look at this property and you look at, hey, who's your security provider? Who's your manager? I, I, I don't want them to say, oh, I think this guy is a retired cop. He doesn't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then I, I'd rather be fired. I want them to say, hey, this guy I got, it's, he's, he cares. He's in, he's in. We call it, you know, plugged in. He's freaking plugged in. Yeah, yeah, he's never yeah. like, what happened? I'm, I'm, I, and then balancing it, you know? you know, being able to plug in and then plug out. Right, right. You gotta stay. You gotta stay tough. Yeah. You gotta stay tough. Yeah. And and 
you have a way of balancing that personally in a way that I, I, I don't know that I've ever really seen that in anybody else. How do you go from managing crisis on, on one end of the spectrum to being completely unplugged and being able to be present and enjoy your family on the other end of the spectrum? How do you make that leap from, from there to there? You know, um, one of my managers, uh, a guy from the recreation department, didn't, it didn't, he didn't lay it out like this, but, mm. but this is, this is one of the things he taught me, okay? Sports analogy, right? Sports. What I do is, is like a, a game. When I go to work, I'm in the game, mm -hmm. right? And I'm doing it, whatever it is, whether it's a hailstorm, windstorm, riots, in the game. Yeah. And when the five o'clock bell rings, game continues. I just get to go sit on the bench and watch the game and catch my breath mm. and relax. But you know what? I'm still part of that game. But right now I'm at home on the bench, sitting down, but the game continues. Mm. I think wow. I think that if you take a football game. And when the offense goes off the field, you think they go into the locker room and go, hey, let's go get some drinks, man. <laughs> no. They right. go huddle up. They relax. They catch their breath. And then they go, somebody else says, hey, okay, guys, back on. They're still mm -hmm. in the game. Still ready. Right? So I, I, I take the time away from work. Mm -hmm. When I get to the bench, I, 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 I'm, I'm there. I'm on the bench. I'm with my family. I'm doing my off time, mm -hmm. but the game continues and I will not forget that. Yeah. I will not forget that. Yeah. No, that's and, and if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, I used to tell people all the time, if you need a day off, you gotta take it. Mm -hmm. Why are you here 12 hours? I'm only paying you eight. You're hurting me. No, I'm just trying to get it done. No, you're hurting me. See, because I can't replace you. I can't replace you and pay somebody eight and get 12 out of them. Yeah. I need you to do your eight and go home. Be ready for your next eight. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we have to, as managers, is teach people is don't, don't hurt me. I would be hurting my boss if I came home wearing, carrying this building. I never left the job and said, I, I, I can't balance, I, I can't balance it. I want to let the family go. Mm -hmm. I'm hurting my family. I'm hurting my boss, right? If you don't learn to balance it, you're not effective. You're really not doing anybody any justice. Yeah. So, so you have to, you have to just commit to what does it take? Now I'm home. Now let's, 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 let's organize to be home. What does it mean? One, I make sure the job has my home number not just my cell phone number or my beeper, right? It's not enough. Guys, call me if it gets thick, call me. And then you gotta teach people. Don't call me because hey, here's a guy walking out front. That's what I first got when I first got there. I came home, it was like crazy. It's like, hey guys, I'm home, you know? That, it, then you gotta, you gotta educate them and teach them and train them of what's, what, what requires my attention, right? And you just can't, you can't, you gotta stay focused. And then you can come home and relax appear to be totally unplugged because you got good people in place. Yeah. So it appears to be unplugged, but I know, I know I got a coach, you know, on, on the field Yeah. that if I need to get involved, I have confidence that they'll call me and go to Westwood and say, well, come back. I need you. And take a, take advantage of every minute you can with your family. Cause it's just nothing lasts forever. Just take, truly take advantage of it. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thanks. What are you, what are you hoping people right now in this, in this time, what are you hoping they'll take away from this entire experience, this entire pandemic, this, you know, social renewal? What are, what are you hoping people will take away from this? That life is short. Mm. And um, it, it changes. It, it changes constantly. Be, be, be uh be ready to adapt you know be ready to, to deal with the, the new norm and what's next yeah um, 
and just and enjoy what you have. Enjoy the moment. It ends. Yeah. Everything ends. It ends. If you could give one piece of advice to the world, what would it be? Seek the spirit, God, mm. and let him speak to you. I'm not preaching. I'm not, I'm not this, you know. Yeah. But just open your heart to goodness. Mm. And, and whatever you believe in, I, whatever you believe in, yeah. seek that connection so you can have peace and be guided. You know, I, I, I believe I'm fed. I'm, 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 I'm truly blessed. I, I know I am. I'm, I'm truly given, I'm whispered to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm given direction. Um, and, and that's, for me, that's everything. You know, when I make a decision, I, I'm comfortable that I'm making the best decision at that time. Yeah. So, so seek goodness, people, honestly, you know, just seek goodness. That's good. How, how do you intend to leave the world better than you found it? Just through example, just, you know, just tell my story, you know, just, just, you know, just, it is what it is, right? I mean, God, I'm, so many buddies say, man, when you die, I'm going to, I can't wait to speak about just how you just did what you wanted to do and you didn't, you know, I'm not here to hurt nobody. I just want to enjoy mine and then, then it's over. I know, I know that if I was given a beginning, I'm, I'm going to get it in. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, so it's just it, it, you can't get one without the other you, you can't say this guy died never lived if you live you die and that's that's just uh that's just the bottom line yeah I, I really my, my father taught me a lot about just about it is what it is mm. make the best make the best of it so yeah just, just look back and say hey this guy did it if you wanted to do it it's the other thing about, about me mark is if i want to do it i'm gonna do it yeah. absolutely if I, I mean, I might not be able to do it today because I can't afford it or yeah. too far, it's too long. But I desire it. It's going to come. Mm. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you feel people need to know? No, I think you're uh, incredible. Uh, I think I was counting as you asked. Uh, it was uh, 102 questions. It was, uh, it was <laughs> they were perfect. No. <laughs> no no my guy just uh guys you know honestly if i could say one last thing yeah. if i could say one last thing as i leave this world I'd, i i would honestly say judge not mm. i i've said it since i was 20 probably yeah. judge not. yeah it's just just judge not mm. we all do everybody's different you know you make your decisions i make mine yeah respect your decisions i just such a judgmental world yeah it's true it's true really really wow uh, it's my gosh I, you know i i had i have to say i had high expectations of this conversation and you you blew them away ah, you, really, you gave me the opportunity thanks so much man i, I definitely appreciated the time you, you really did i feel like the perspective that you shared needs to be heard by everyone and I will do my utmost to make sure that it gets to as many people as, as I can. Um, where can people find you and connect with you online? Because I have a feeling that you're going to be, uh, you're going to be, you're going to be busy. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I hope, I hope, I hope I don't get my department going. Why did you say that? Why did you say that? <laughs> no, I you mean, know, in, I, a good, in a good way, in a good way. Like, I, I, I am, I'm not big on uh, social media, but I stay connected to it. Right. So I can, so I can uh, be in the know. Right. Um, yeah. I do Twitter, you know, P A D O W one, Pat Al one on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I do Instagram. I don't like this. You can just find me by my name, Facebook. Uh, yeah. I don't do Facebook a lot. That's yeah. a little too much. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't, I, you know, I got into tweeting because I thought it was cool. Yeah. And then somebody smacked me on Twitter and I was like, I don't like that. I don't like that. People can say <laughs> what they want to say to you. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to be the nice guy. And, and, you know. right. So, but, you know, I'm, I'm out there. I'm, I'm yeah. out Sounds good. Sounds good. Walter, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, a privilege, and, and an honor to have you on, on the podcast today. Thank you so, so uh, much. Thank you. Man, thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon.